India has tightened trade restrictions on Bangladesh by banning imports of specific jute products and ropes through all land routes with immediate effect, allowing entry only via Nhava Shiva seaport. This follows similar curbs on June 27 targeting various jute items and earlier measures in April and May restricting imports of garments, processed foods, and other goods. On April 9, India also revoked Bangladesh's transshipment facility for most exports. These moves come amid strained bilateral ties after controversial remarks by Bangladesh's interim leader Mohammad Yunus in China and his failure to curb minority attacks. With Bangladesh a key textile competitor, the 2023-24 bilateral trade stood at 12.9 billion US dollars, with India's exports at 11.46 billion US dollars and imports at 2 billion US dollars. Tata Advanced Systems Limited introduced the Sarvatra Kavach, an indigenous full-body bulletproof suit, designed for 360-degree protection and high mobility. The project began in June 2017 as a Level 3A soft armor concept at the College of Military Engineering, led by Major Anup Mishra, who was inspired after surviving a sniper attack in Kashmir. It later evolved to incorporate Level 4 hard panels capable of stopping sniper rounds at close range. Covering from neck to ankle, the lightweight, weather-resistant suit integrates modular armor panels, quick-release systems, and gear loops for tactical adaptability. After successful field trials, the Indian Army is expected to issue tenders for mass production, marking a significant boost to India's Atmanirbhar Bharat defense drive. During November 2024, India and Japan signed a Memorandum of Implementation to co-develop the Unified Complex Radio Antenna Mast, marking Japan's first military tech export to India. Building on this, India renewed interest in Japan's Soria-class submarine lithium-ion battery technology, sought earlier in 2017 and 2022, to enhance future Project 75i and beyond. The advanced system offers longer endurance, faster charging, and reduce noise for stealthier operations. Between July 30th and August 2nd, 2025, Indian Navy Chief Admiral Dinesh K. Tripathi visited Japan meeting senior defense officials to push for expanded naval R&D and possible lithium-ion battery tech access, signaling a new phase in Indo-Japanese maritime collaboration. The Indian Air Force has initiated a two-year project to refurbish its four Embraer 135 business jets, in service since 2005 for transporting top civilian and military leaders. The overhaul, to be executed by a Gurugram-based aviation firm, will cover a complete repaint, cockpit modernization, and passenger cabin upgrades, including new fittings, furnishings, flooring, and polished interiors. Work will be done sequentially one aircraft at a time, ensuring three remain operational, with each overhaul taking about five months. These 7,500-kilometer range, 14-passenger jets operate under the Air Headquarters Communications Squadron at Palam, alongside Boeing 777s, Boeing 737s, and MI-17 helicopters. The initiative reflects the IF's focus on keeping its VIP transport fleet, Mission ready for high-level official travel. The Indian Air Force and Army are planning to integrate the indigenous Astra MK-1A Beyond Visual Range Air-to-Air -air Missile into 87 medium altitude long endurance UAVs being procured for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance roles. The Aeronautical Development Establishment under DRDO has designed the Archer NG UAV to carry two Astra MK-1A missiles, each with a 110 km range. Guided via data links from manned fighters or AWACS, the system will enable UAVs to engage slow-moving aerial threats and even manned jets in contested zones. The missiles will be supported by an ASA radar for both ISR and targeting functions. This marks a pioneering step in weaponizing Indian unmanned platforms, with potential integration beyond the Archer NG program.
Adani Defense Systems and Technologies Limited, ADSDL, in a 50-50 partnership with Prime Aero under Horizon Aero Solutions Limited, signed a binding agreement to fully acquire Indomer Technics Private Limited, ITPL, a leading private sector maintenance, repair, and overhaul company in India. ITPL operates a modern facility in Nagpur's Mian SEZ, with 15 aircraft bays across 10 hangars, serving both domestic and global clients with DGCA, FAA, and other international approvals. Jita Dani stated the move aligns with India's rapid aviation growth, aiming to position the country as a global MRO hub. The acquisition follows Adani's earlier purchase of Airworks, expanding its footprint as India's largest private MRO player, and strengthening integrated aviation services for both commercial and defense sectors. A recent parliamentary panel review warned of rising Chinese influence in the Indian Ocean region and its strategic risks to India's security. It highlighted China's expanding naval fleet, now the world's largest, and infrastructure projects under the Belt and Road Initiative, aimed at securing key maritime choke points. The panel also expressed concern over the strengthening China-Pakistan Naval Partnership, which supports joint drills and modernizes Pakistan's navy potentially shifting the regional power balance. The Ministry of External Affairs identified threats such as piracy, terrorism, and extra-regional military presence. The panel urged India to upgrade anti-submarine and surveillance capabilities, enhance maritime domain awareness, and deepen alliances with regional and global partners to counter the combined China-Pakistan maritime challenge. According to some defense media sources, the Indian Air Force have has strongly advocated for a government-to-government -government deal with France to procure additional Rafale fighter jets under the 114 Aircraft Multi-Role Fighter Aircraft Program, MRFA. The move follows heightened tensions with Pakistan during Operation Sindor from May 7 to 10, 2025, when Rafales were extensively used for cross-border strikes. Pakistan claimed to have downed six IF jets, including three Rafales, a claim India denied. The MRFA project, stalled for seven to eight years, is critical as the IF faces a severe fighter squadron shortfall, set to drop from 31 to 29, with the MiG-21's retirement next month, far below the authorized 42.5. The threat is compounded by China's planned supply of 40 J-35A stealth jets to Pakistan. The IF also flagged the need for fifth-generation fighters, considering Russia's Sukhoi-57 and the US F-35, until India's AMCA becomes operational by 2035. In August 2025, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited's Nashik Division received flight clearance for its first locally produced Tejas MK-1A light combat aircraft, marking the third LCA production line outside Bengaluru. This milestone followed the facility's successful absorption of manufacturing technology and matched capacity of eight aircraft per year. The clearance came amid Indian Air Force concerns over delayed Tejas deliveries, voiced in May 2025 by the Air Chief Marshal, in the presence of the Defense Minister. The IF has ordered 83 MK-1A jets to replace aging MiG-21s, but still awaits the MK-2 prototype. As of August, HAL has delivered 11 MK-1A single-seaters and 9 trainers, with two more expected by year-end, though GE engine shortages remain a bottleneck. Nashik's expansion aims to boost production, with a possible fourth line planned, supporting India's drive for self-reliance and countering regional air power challenges. Russian President Vladimir Putin is expected to visit India during September, with talks likely to finalize major defense deals aimed at boosting the Indian Air Force's capabilities. The discussions reportedly center on co-producing 50 to 60 Su-57 E stealth fighters at Hal Nashik, along with our 37M long-range missiles, Zircon hypersonic weapons, the S-500 air defense system, 
and advanced anti-stealth radars. These systems could help bridge India's fighter shortfall until its AMCA enters service in the mid-2030s, countering China's J-20 and Pakistan's potential J-35A fleet. The proposed package aligns with India's Make in India vision, offering full system integration rights, a key factor in India's recent rejection of the U.S. F-35 offer. However, payment challenges and potential U.S. COTSA sanctions, as experienced during the S-400 deal, remain obstacles that could delay or complicate the agreements. That's all from YKS team for now, hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.